So for this question, we're given the rational function. R of x is negative 5x squared plus 5x plus 30 over x squared plus 6x plus 8. We want to find any asymptotes, holes, and intercepts. So let's factor. I always like to factor at the bottom first. x squared plus 6x plus 8. What do we get here? Here's x squared, here's 8, here's plus 6x, that's plus 8. x times x plus 4 plus 2 plus 4x and plus 2x is plus 6x, so we get x plus 4, x plus 2 downstairs. So remember the, down, the bottom can't be 0, so the domain will throw out negative 4 and negative 2. The top, I have negative 5 x squared plus 5x plus 30. Let's first factor out the common factor of negative 5. That gives me x squared minus x minus 30. Check that. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times negative x is positive 5x. Negative 5 times not negative 30. That, of course, should be negative 6. Negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30. So I want to factor that. <clears throat> Again, I want to factor negative 5 times x squared minus x minus 6. So we'll do that. I like to use the factor box again. You probably can do this one in your head. Here's x squared. Here's negative 6. Here's negative x. x times x, negative 3 times positive 2. So I get negative 3x and positive 2x is negative x. x minus 3x plus 2 is what this becomes. So we get negative 5 times x minus 3x plus 2 on top. Uh, before I go on, <clears throat> I guess I should have noticed the fact that the degree of the top and the bottom are the same. So we can get the horizontal asymptote just by looking at those. The degree of the top and the bottom are both x squared, are both two, so cover over the lower terms. Negative five x squared over one x squared just gives me negative five. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative five. But let's go ahead now and figure out what our vertical asymptotes are. So remember, here's the numerator, here's the top. Here's the denominator, here is the bottom. So let's see where we are. We have r of x equals the top, negative 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 4, x plus 2. Now for the domain, x cannot equal negative 4, x cannot equal negative 2. So here's negative 4, here's negative 2. The domain would be these three intervals so that's negative infinity to negative 4 union, negative 4 to negative 2 union, negative 2 to infinity. But I want you to notice what happens is the x plus 2 divides out. But the domain doesn't change. The domain still throws out negative 2. So with this restricted domain, my function is now negative 5 times x minus 3 over x plus 4. So what about my vertical asymptote? The bottom cannot be 0. So we'll have an asymptote if it is. So x is negative 4. Now what's happening at negative 2? So again, negative 2 is not in the domain. But what if it were? What if it were? 
So this new version of R, so right now I have R of X is negative five times X minus three over X plus four. And I'm saying negative two is not in the domain. But if it were, what would it be? What would R of negative two be? It would be negative five times negative two minus three over negative two plus four, which gives me negative five times negative five over two, which gives me 25 halves. So when X is negative two, the Y should have been 25 halves, but we actually have to remove that. So let's see what that means um, by jumping to Desmos. So I wanna focus on that. We have our vertical asymptote, we have our horizontal asymptote, and we have this interesting point happening at negative two. And we'll still go back and look at our intercepts. So let's go to Desmos again and pull it up. So my original function here was r of x equals, on top we had negative five x squared plus five x plus 30. On the bottom I have x squared plus six x plus eight. And let's go to our home screen first. We can't see much on the home screen. Let's adjust our window a little bit. Mm. I think I want to have, you know, I want more X and I want more Y. Let's go ahead and draw in our asymptotes. We said the horizontal asymptote was y equals negative five. So let's see if we can see that. Uh, I need a lot more x to be able to visualize that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adjust my window. So we'll double or so, so maybe negative 25 to 25. How's that look? Can we believe that indeed that's the case? Well, maybe I need to have even more to believe that. Let's double it up one more time. Let's go negative 50 to 50. And yeah, certainly trending that way, so we can believe that. The vertical asymptote was x equals negative four. And I'd like to see a whole lot more Y to be able to visualize that a little better. So maybe we'll go negative 50 to 50 on Y as well. And yeah, that seems reasonable. But what about that point that we said was an issue where R was negative two? And we said, if the point was there, it's not in the domain. So negative two, 25 halves is there. But that's not really on the graph because negative two was not in the domain because that would have enabled what? That would have enabled the bottom to be zero of the original function. But you'll notice if it were there, that's where it would be on the graph. And that's why that becomes a whole that is actually missing. So there's our horizontal asymptote, y equals negative five, our vertical asymptote at x equals negative four, and a hole at negative two, 25 halves. Now we also want to find our intercepts. So our x and our y intercepts. So let's go back to the paper and see if we can determine that. So it started with this was our original. R of X is negative five X squared 
plus 5x plus 30, all over x squared plus 6x plus 8. If I want the y-intercept to find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0, right? The y-intercept is when x is 0, what is the, re the respective y-value? So what is r of 0? That's negative 5 times 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 30 over 0 squared plus 6 times 0 plus 8 which is 30 over 8, which is 15 over 4. So the point 0, comma 15 fourths should be the y-intercept on the graph. Let me go ahead and go back to Desmos and see if we can identify 0, 15 fourths. Looks like the y-intercept to me. We can even click on it. And it tells me it's 0, 3 and 3 quarters, which is 0, 15 fourths. And the last thing for us to do is to find the x-intercepts, if we have any. And it sure looks like we have one here. And notice, just by clicking on the graph, we get 3, 0. Can we do that analytically? So remember, our function was originally r of x negative 5x squared plus 5x plus 30 all over x squared plus 6x plus 8. But then after we did some analysis and the x plus 2 divided out, we had negative 5 times x minus 3 over x plus 4. In this way, we want to find the x-intercept. What does that mean? find the x-intercept. Sometimes we have more than one. Well, you set y equal to zero and solve for x. But in this case, the y is the r of x. So set r of x equal to zero. So zero equals negative five times x minus three over x plus four, which means what? Which means the top, if a fraction is zero, the top is zero. Zero is negative five times x minus three, which means x minus three is zero which means x is 3. So what is the x-intercept? What should it be? The x-intercept should be 3, 0. So again, let's go to Desmos and see if we can locate that point. So 3, 0 is the x-intercept, which is there. Let's zoom it in so we can see this stuff a little bit better. Sure enough, there's my x-intercept at 3, 0, and my y-intercept at zero, um, 15 quarters, also known as three and three quarters. And that will do that for this problem.